Hey guys, how are you doing? Today we're going to be just walking around, doing some stuff I've got to do. we got to do the dishes, make some chili, fold some laundry. It's Saturday and i got a bunch to do. So I'm going to take you along with me. Hope you enjoy. The first thing we're going to do is start this chili. I always like to wrap my meat in paper towels just to get a little bit of the excess blood off of it. Turn the stove on. Should already have that done. Put the hamburger meat in here. I'm gonna stir this up real good. Dice up a little onion. Sorry about the glare with that knife. It's catching it, huh? Here we go with my culinary cutting skills. I know I shouldn't be cutting it against me. They tell me all the time, and it is a bad habit to break. My husband and his family think onions should be in everything. And we've been married for 26 years, so pretty much I put onions in everything. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and cut this whole onion up and use that. Never have enough. Especially these sweet onions. Not real particular about the size because they're gonna cook down. It's just gonna be an easy, easy chili recipe. And it's not really a recipe, you just add the ingredients. But I will tell you, eh, I had to run up to the grocery store this morning to purchase store-bought beans because for the first time in a long time I ran out of my dry beans my canned beans I'm gonna give this another little quick stir I don't know what this little hamburger press stir thing is but I absolutely love it I use it for my hamburger meat, obviously. You can shred chicken, pork, anything like if you're doing in the crock pot. It's wonderful. If I can think of the name or I can find out what the name of it is, I'll link it in the description box below. You should really get one of these if you don't have it. I'm also using store-bought chili packets, but I only have two left. I've started making homemade chili seasoning, taco seasoning, and ranch dressing. I'll show you guys how to do that in a future video. It's very convenient. So much more budget friendly. And probably these four little packets, what I spent on making, on buying these, I could probably make a quart jar with half the cost. This is just about ready. Tilt it just a little bit, drain some of the grease off of it, get it out, and then we'll add everything else. Paper towel on the bottom of this cup. And scoop a bunch of grease out. I almost didn't drain this because looking at it in the pot it didn't look like there was a lot of grease in there at all but i'm glad i took it out i try to always drain it out completely try to get all the grease out Not the hamburger meat. a lot more than what i thought
then we will throw that away. Now that that's done, we're going to add our chili packets. I don't know why, but I always put mine in on the meat, even when I make chili. I mean, even when I make tacos, I put my seasoning on the meat. I don't know if that does anything or a lot of people add it after they've added their tomatoes and all. I just feel like I can get it stirred up a little bit better like this. All right, we're going to add dark red kidney beans, light red kidney beans. Oh, that's dark red. Light red. Too light red, too dark red. I won't rinse these cans out with water. Put them in here. We're going to use our diced canned tomatoes that we made from at home. If you want to see that video, I will put a link in the description box below. Mm. There we go. Pop the top. I think that is hilarious. I smell everything. And tomatoes. Throw the lids away. Put this over to be washed. What's really cool, and I never really thought about this, and you'll probably think I'm crazy, which I am, but when you use canned, like store-bought cans, you throw them away. There's really not a whole bunch other than crafting you know to do with it but whenever you have your canned when you can things at home you rewash it like there is no waste the only waste that we had and what I just put in here of my tomatoes is the lids I think that's pretty cool and I always fill up my bean jars with water see I don't know if you can really see that or not there's always juice and thickness and I think it's starch or something from the beans in the bottom of the can. So I always add water to it and try to get that out. Some yummy bunch of goodness. See, like now I have to put these in my garbage can. You fill it up. I don't know, maybe I should look into what I could do with the jars. I don't know if you can recycle them, these cans or not. Oh, it does. It says, please recycle right here. Learn something new every day. So I was just blabbing for 10 minutes for nothing. But I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. I'll throw them in the garbage for today. So I probably added a can and a half, maybe two cans of water to this. I just, like I said, I just rinsed my pot out with it. Two dark red kidney beans, two light red kidney beans, two pints of tomatoes, two pounds of hamburger meat, one onion, two packs of chili powder or chili seasoning mix. I used one original and one mild flavor of the chili packs. Bring this up to a bowl and let it simmer for about 
I don't know. An hour. Turn it on low. Dang, that's good. And it's fast. And it's not ready yet. <laughs> Alright, guys. We'll see you back here in just a little bit. When we move on to the next project, which will probably be washing these dishes. Oh, yeah. Got to do these dishes. It's kind of embarrassing. I wasn't going to show it, but it's life. I didn't do dishes for two days. <laughs> Awful. I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but I'm washing my dishes and then I'm putting them in the dishwasher. I always try to do that and run it through a quick cycle. Um, that way it, it makes me feel like they're getting sanitized, especially if I don't do them every day. I kind of like to do that. Almost done. I just have my bacon pan to wash and oh, yep, of course, I'm going to wash the eggs that I got this morning. Got the last couple things washed and hey, hey, we are about to make a pineapple upside down cake with my little twist. So here we go. We're going to use the Duncan Hines Pineapple Supreme. I'm going to do everything like it says on the box except for it says one cup of water. We're not going to add a cup of water. We're going to add a cup of the pineapple juice. Okay. We have a pack of pineapple supreme cake mix. Three large eggs. With no shells. Oh, sorry. I know that's loud. A half a cup of vegetable oil. And, like I said, instead of one cup of water, we are going to use the juice out of our sliced pineapples. And it just so happens to be one cup. We're going to get every little drop we can out of it to make sure. That's right. Whisk all this up. I'm just mixing this by hand instead of breaking out the mixer. Just keep mixing, making sure we get all the lumps out of here. I'm going to set this aside and show you why. I say with my little twist. I'm gonna grab my pan. Go ahead and give this a quick spray. It's the vegetable. And now, first thing we're gonna do is put in our crushed pineapple. I'm going to drain a little bit of this juice off. Alright. I'm going to take this crushed pineapple and heavy syrup. Sprinkle it on the bottom of the pan. My oven is ready. It is preheated to 350 degrees. You guys just heard the beep. Alright. Spread out the pineapple a little bit. I'm gonna wash my hands. I'll be right back. We are going to put 
chop pecans. Maybe a cup. Maybe a cup and a half. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on top. We're gonna say two cups of brown sugar. Now we are going to add a one stick or half a cup of melted butter. We're just gonna drizzle this on top. Now we are going to take our sliced pineapple and lay it on top. That's what I'm going to break in half. Or in three pieces, I'm sorry. Put on the end. We have a little bit left over. I'm going to wash my hands, and I will show you what this looks like. All right, let's see. There we go. Now we're going to go back to our bath. Like one little stir again. We're just going to dump this over the top. Because we have so many toppings, I just want to make sure I have this evenly on here. And of course, I'm the cook, so I could eat some. <laughs> good, good. I'll give this a little shake. fingers. I'm going to put this in the oven on 350 per the box directions for 22 to 27 minutes. So we're going to set it for 25 minutes and then we're going to come back and check it. Put this in the oven. What is in the oven? And we will be back in 25 minutes. Oh yeah, here we go. Dinner is served. Let me try some. Oh my goodness. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Alright guys, I am fixing to go chow down with my chili, my butter crackers, and my... Mm-hmm. Uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, yep, cheddar cheese. <laughs> All right, here we go. Alrighty, guys, we just took it out of the oven, and it ended up taking me right out an hour to bake this. I think because of all the gooey goodness we put in the bottom, it took a little while longer, but, um, I'll show you. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna let it cool for a little bit. I'll cut a piece and show you guys. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Here we go, the upside down reveal. Oh my gosh, it didn't even stick. So glad we used the spray. All right guys, here we go. This is the taste test demonstration. Yeah, <laughs> I love to do this part. Get me a big old bite here. A little bit of it all. 
Oh, and I dropped it. Oh, it's so good. If you haven't tried those, you really should. The um, pecans make such a difference in here. Hmm, that's good. Gotta try it. The cake is so moist. And that extra, um, instead of using water, we use the juices from the pineapple. And it, the cake is so good. Mmm. But, the pineapple topping, you can't beat butter, pecans, and pineapples. That's like, awesome. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. Hit that like button and leave me a comment if there's anything that you'd like to see me do or have any questions about what I do. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.